I'm Dave. Welcome to TRP Tech Talk. Today, we're going to be talking a bit about the high road. We're also going to perform a full bleed. We've been getting a lot of questions on how the high road works, so I want to break it down. Now, all the tools for this procedure can be purchased at trpcycling.com. The first step is to remove the caliper from the bike. This will allow access to both bleed ports much easier and be much cleaner. Ready? Let's get started. The tools needed to do this are a three millimeter Allen wrench, TRP two piston bleed block, T15 Torx, TRP mineral oil, two TRP syringes, one filled with TRP mineral oil, isopropyl alcohol, nitrile gloves, and a clean rag. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to check is the barrel adjuster. Simply by turning this and bottoming it out, turning it in clockwise, you can ensure that there's no excess cable tension on the actuation arm. The actuation arm, as I've set it up here, is actually not in the correct spot. I've got this actuation arm pushed a little bit further back than it should be. And in fact, I've got it pushed so far back that the tongue back here has in engaged the actual caliper, and from there it started to push the push rod forward. That push rod's connected directly to the master cylinder piston, and if you can see inside here, there's actually a timing port. At this current position, the master cylinder piston is closed the timing port. This will not allow fluid to flow through the system and it will also not allow the system to compensate for pad wear. It's what we like to call a closed system. So in order to fix this push rod situation, you'll notice that there's two small screws on the actuation arm. One is the push rod itself with a two millimeter Allen. The other is a push rod set screw with a 1.5 millimeter Allen. By taking that two millimeter Allen wrench, turn the push rod counterclockwise until the lock knob is perfectly in line with the actuation arm and you're able to thread the lock knob in easily. Once you've got that lock knob threaded in, there's no interference, you don't have to push the actuation arm forward or back, you know that it's in the correct spot. From there, go ahead and turn the caliper over and using a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench, tighten the lock the actuation arm set screw to ensure that it doesn't migrate or move unwillingly. Now your system's ready for a full bleed. Let's go ahead and jump into that. Start by removing your brake pads. First, remove your brake pad retaining pin clip and put aside. Then using the three millimeter Allen wrench, remove your brake pad retaining pin. Put that aside for just a moment and remove your brake pads. Put those in a safe place to avoid any contamination. Now, install your bleed block. Using the same pad retaining pin, you can secure the bleed block in place so it doesn't fall out. The bleed block will help prevent the pistons from moving as we push fluid through the system. Next, again using your three millimeter Allen wrench, remove the caliper side bleed port plug. Keep the caliper level with the ground to avoid any excess spillage. Then, using our syringe we've already filled, with TRP branded hydraulic disc brake mineral oil, install your syringe to the caliper side. Once that's secure, we can rotate the caliper and we can remove our reservoir bleed port plug using our T15 torch wrench. Now we can install our empty syringe to catch the clean fluid that we're gonna be pushing through the, through the system. Once both sides are secure, we can start to slowly push fluid from the caliper side, through the system, through the reservoir, and into the second syringe. We can also rotate the caliper back and forth, different directions to try to encourage any bubbles that are stuck in places to come out and hopefully get filled with fluid. Now, once you've got enough clean fluid pushed through the system into the other side, since I'm using two syringes, I can actually go back and start to push fluid from the reservoir out the caliper. This will help any bubbles that may be trapped in the caliper side to then get out of the system, creating that full bleed. Now, you can repeat this step two, three, possibly even four times just to ensure that all the bubbles have exited the system. 
Go ahead and do one more. There we go. One more nice syringe through just to make sure that everything's out. We're starting to look really good on this caliper, so I think we're about time to move on. First step in this is to remove the caliper side syringe. Now again, keeping everything level with the ground to avoid any excess spillage, remove that caliper side syringe. We can then go ahead and reinstall our caliper side bleed port plug. I clean off any excess fluid that might have spilled out, but you noticed I've left the reservoir syringe still attached. Now the reason for this is what we can do now is what we call a lever purge. Start by removing the actual syringe itself from the surgical tubing still attached to the reservoir. This will give us some excess fluid to top off the reservoir system as we perform our lever purge. Now lever purge is performed by slowly pushing the actuation arm and trying to encourage any bubbles that might be trapped in the reservoir to come out through this tube and in turn the fluid in the tube is going to flow down and top the reservoir off. You can also give it a couple flicks and as you notice you, you might get just a couple more bubbles out ensuring that the system is fully fully topped off. I see one more coming out so I'm going to get that guy and then as you start to feel you'll, you'll feel the system start to firm up get much more firm and if you're starting to have issues with this and you're not feeling the system firm up I'll show you a little trick. Using a compression strap, a rubber band, or zip tie. Put the actuation arm under compression and cinch that die down. Now that is gonna put all the bubbles under compression, making them smaller. And because they're smaller, they can work their way through smaller places. And you can go ahead and tap on the caliper and rotate the caliper and try to just get any of those bubbles freed up from anywhere that they're sticking inside. Now this compression can be done anywhere from one hour, two hours, or even overnight if you have the time, just to make sure everything's out of this system. So after you've done the compression, do a, move back to the lever purge stage and flick and pump the actuation arm just to get any last bubbles that might have moved under the compression stage out of the reservoir. Now this system is starting to feel very, very firm. It's engaging very, very well. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. Using our syringe, again, attach the surgical tubing to the syringe to prevent any spillage. And we can go ahead and remove the reservoir side syringe. Once that's removed, go ahead and replace your reservoir bleed plug. And before we go ahead and put the brake pads back in, we're gonna give this caliper a small dose of isopropyl alcohol to clean up the surface that might have got any oil on it. So you're getting all the nooks and crannies will help to avoid any contamination. And once the caliper's nice and clean, free of any contaminants and oil, we can go ahead and go back to our pad retaining pin, remove that so we can remove the bleed block. And then carefully not to touch the surface of the brake pads reinstall the brake pads into the caliper, reinstall our pad retaining pin, and that can be snug to two to three Newton meters, and then reinstall our pad retaining pin clip. 
And there you have it. Full high road bleed, your system is ready to reinstall. Now the high road is ready to set up on your bike. I'm gonna do it in front of the camera to give close up details. You'll of course be setting it up on your bike. Here's how it's done. When setting up your high roads cable, the first thing to do is make sure that your barrel adjuster is all the way bottomed out. The next thing is to make sure that your actuation arm lock knob is threaded into the actuation arm. This ensures that the actuation arm itself, the push rod, and the master cylinder inside are all in the correct position. Next, pull on the brake cable to get all the slack out and tighten the cable anchor bolt to six to eight newton meters. We recommend using TRP's compressionless linear strand brake housing. This directly translates what's going through the housing and cable into the brake rather than losing any of it in the traditional coiled brake housing. From here, unlock the th threaded actuation arm lock knob. And if there's any excess slack or dead play in your brake lever, use your barrel adjuster to a maximum of 1.5 turns to ensure that there's adequate cable tension and there's no slop in your brake lever. From there, you're ready to run. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at info at trpcycling.com. And for more content like this, visit our website at trpcycling.com.